and it turns out that Sargassum, along with Kajiki and Wakame, are the two most radiation nuclear source damage therapeutic and preventing. So the people have the best survival rate in terms of overall health and morbidity subsequent to Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs were the wards of the state, from as near as I can tell from the Japanese literature. No, I don't read Japanese. Hey! In case there's any doubt. And... Nandayo! Uh, arigato. <laughs> so, the people who were the wards of the state, Japan had been at war since 18, what was it, 56 or something. Not officially, but ever since, that's right, Admiral Perry stormed into Yokohama Harbor and said, we're going to blow you off the face of Japan unless you open us up to... New trade. No, trade. Trade. Prefer <laughs> yeah. New trade, yeah. Thank you, yeah, preferred trade. Mm -hmm. And so if you go through the, the Japanese or Oriental astrological chart, Pearl Harbor was inevitable. Mm -hmm. It was at that time. Preordained. They wrote this talk about that deal in the 1850s. So, anywho, the wards of the state were those who got the last of the food, lousy food, just sort of like the Ag Commodities Program. So that was old sargassum, which tends to, because it has so many little animals on it, starts to putrefy a little bit in storage. And very old barley miso, which is extremely strong and harsh. Miso. And they had the best survival record, and also in terms of the intensity of the pathology, radiation sickness, hair loss, lesions, just corroding away. That was pretty impressive. And that was picked up by the Japanese literature and translated into English in the 60s. As far as I know, it's ignored by everybody except me. I'm trying to figure out, well, how come? This is great therapeutic plant growing in huge quantities and it's just as though it had no effect whatsoever. It might have been Buddhism. I can't claim that it was just a seed. And then about four or five years ago I found a seaweed Let's see. Yep, one of the seaweed meetings. There was a just this really shrill was that you Terry? Yeah it was Oh well. Shouldn't mention names, but damn it all. She's a pretty good psychologist otherwise. Terry Klinger from Fred Arbor Marine Lab said we've got to stop this Undaria pinifitata. I said, oh my god, stop the pinifitatas right away. <laughs> that sounds like one of those Mexican games behind closed curtains. But no, it's the name, scientific name for wakame, which is about the number three most popular in terms of flavor and conception of all the seaweeds in Asian cultures. You know what? That's like saying it's raining solid silver yen pieces. We've got to throw them away. <laughs> and they're from Japan, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I take a couple of shots to my credibility hemispheres <laughs> on each side. And I try to explain and what a gift! It's edible, it's yummy, and we've got a really, not quite as tasty, second cousin, which is Alaria esculenta, which means really yummy. Esculenta, not <laughs> Alaria, because it has wings coming off of midriff. And it's pretty good, but it's not that popular, fortunately. And it first invaded, allegedly, right around Hopkins Marine Station in Monterey Bay. It was sort of like the unwritten John Steinbeck book. Mm -hmm. Bad Boys of the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Tortilla Flats. And it was growing first on the scientist's ear. And so they had either been off in Japan, doing this or that, public expense, come back and it had been growing on the hulls. So they must have spent a long time in the harbor for Wakame <laughs> to be growing on the bottom. And it just spread all the pilings. 
yachts that float but are never sailed, that type of thing. And then one of them did sail, apparently. This is all reconstructive gossip from the seaweed meeting. Then how in the hell did it suddenly show up in Marin County? Hmm, you must have traveled by boat. Don't suppose there. Thinking up on me. <laughs> no, stuff just grabbed you like that. Or did somebody transplant it there? But by the time it was discovered and acknowledged, if you've been to Sausalito and around, then the water's kind of murky sometimes. There's always a little bit of a swell, usually. And it's hard to see very deep. And so the wakame was just growing, 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 piling, boat bottoms, houseboat piling, huge quantities. Oh my god, invasive seaweed taking over San Francisco <laughs> Bay. And it's the number one treatment for breast cancer. Now, isn't it intriguing that Marin County has the highest rate of breast cancer in North America? Yeah, that's too freaky. That's too freaky. We're all those battered breasts. No, we need battered. In fact, I no, we need battered. You see, growing out of control breasts, bringing in the wakame. Breasts. Yeah. So now, California. Our Californians are thinking about trying to eradicate it. If you want to read the work on seaweeds and cancers of various kinds, the author's name is Tees. You know, T E A S, J Tees. And she did her first work on gorillas. So she's obviously qualified. Oh, forgive me, Jane. It's so funny. Uh -huh. Their work on seaweeds. And her work has been sponsored by the Department of Defense. This one? Yes! Exactly! <laughs> I know it drives me crazy too. <laughs> because, what? Great timing, gang. Two extra smart cars for that. So, as soon as the army got women, he got breast cancer. So, the rate is about one in five. Jesus, that's really high. About one in eight is what's happening. The rest of the people Yeah. And so, Jane works with. Well, sargassum, which he harvested first on Waldron Island, I have to say, mm -hmm. and helped launch her broken fingernails and wet socks. So is the wakame natural in uh, Waldron, or did it come in basic no. too? No. It came. No, I said, oh, I said sargassum. Oh, I'm sorry. Sargassum. Yeah. Right. Wakame in Puget Sound? <coughs> I don't know. I try not to touch the water. <laughs> 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 yeah. Only rat fish. So did you tell us what sargassum was good for? Didn't I? Mm -hmm. I didn't. So we care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Radiation. Radiation. Yeah. Sargassum. sargassum is the one with the radiation exposure, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you said it was, okay, yeah, you said that. Barley so, miso and sargassum. Right, yeah. post-radiation. Right. Right. And okay. right. And lock them in if you can get it. So, which would be important to understand. Okay. So far. I think there's an industry in San Francisco Bay. San Francisco Bay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or San Francisco Bay, waiting to happen. Okay, so sargassum is also extremely useful in healing of cut or damaged tissue. Okay. Topically or oral? Topically, you're on the risk of feeding microbes. So just waiting for that type of phycopolymer or algae environment to get case. How does it, when, when you cultivate sargassum, is it cool? Oh, you don't cultivate it. You just harvest it. It's a self-cultivating plant. It's attached to rocks, which is like a hold fast. And if you pull it, it usually just breaks. Unless the rock that it's attached to weighs less than 10 pounds, then you're picking up this huge mass of rock. And it's very exciting. <laughs> I'm not careful. So, we wade out in a minus tide and clip it where it's clean and beautiful. And if it's not clean and beautiful, by that I mean <coughs> free of epiphytes and animal colonies, then we <laughs> just wash it like crazy. And then if necessary, wash it, power wash it with 30 foot head of water. That's free water. Water that hasn't been chlorinated or touched by terrible things, or, you know, except God. And then we hang it up to dry. And it dries down. You saw just a little, 
wiry stuff. <coughs> Hardly anything at all. Where the wakame, because it's a broad leaf, it's a very tough, thick midrib, then it, it shrinks, but it stays as a recognizable, beautiful green, starts out brown piece of stuff. And so far as I know, sargassum is only cultivated in Asia. And the latest ads that I got on my, in the email were from Vietnam. The Vietnamese are starting to cultivate sargassum in large quantities. If you go to the anti-cancer literature slash therapeutic use of seaweed, sargassum will have over a thousand new entries every year on Medline. So there's a lot of stuff going on elsewhere. I, I hope it's recognized that, or it's because it's recognized that a little bit of pre-planning in the diet, if you're susceptible to breast cancer or other cancers, can help prevent an awful lot of unnecessary surgery and anxiety horrors. So using sargassum in the relatively small patient body the number of people that I've had that had diagnosed cancer from stages one through four, not the same person, unfortunately, the sargassum I provided until they got used to eating it, taught them how to harvest it themselves because it's available on every safe day on the water, and to supplement that <coughs> with the only known anti-tumor, anti-metastatic herb in the Essiac formula, if you remember Cassie spelled backwards, and that is our common, where are you, you little rascal? No, not you. Let's see. It's Rumex acetosella. It's a little dwarfy relative of yellow dock. So it's in the Polygonaceae or buckwheat family. It grows year-round here, and it, it just kind of spreads underneath stuff. It comes into your garden from maybe half a mile away, apparently. And it's also called sour grass. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It has little arrowhead shaped leaves and a little tiny, up to one and a half to two foot high, red seed, rusty red seed head. Just gorgeous in really dry areas. And so it, it'll start at the edge of the sea where the saltwater intrusion stops and just grow inland. So where I live, it's easy, relatively speaking, for people who are still <coughs> walking and using a blender to get up to two or three ounces of the fresh plant every day and then blending it up and then flavoring it however they can to eat it. Well, not necessarily curry. <laughs> it <laughs> can be cooked or raw. Yeah. I try to have to do it raw. It has a really nice dry bite. It's harsh. Is there a nutshell explanation of how they affect the progress of breast cancer? No, nope, that'd be real nice. But, did you hear his question? What is the potential mechanism for stopping or slowing progression of cancer in consequence of acetocella or seed? Concentrators of iodine. And that iodine is used to maintain the architecture of the ductal portions, of the distal portions in the mammary gland. And 80% of women autopsy, which is not 80% of all women, have shown that 80% of them had cystic breasts at some time during their reproductive years. And if you have cystic breasts, you know this demonstration here. Mm -hmm other people around. And the treatment for cystic breast before surgery is iodine. Iodine is a orally 
plate is painted directly, or in the case of a very large fish, up to 10% iodine solution injected directly into the fish. Well, we're going to find out. I'm so glad.